say, but I learned about hip hop. Mm -hmm. it's just being able to express yourself. Right. <laughs> Make sure that you go from end to root, not root to end. That minimizes the amount of breakage to the final table.
Tried to super glue it right here. So you might need to get a universal one and see if you can put one that goes over. They break. That. Yeah, I know they do. Especially the one with the teeth, the comb teeth. The last one yeah, I had. You don't want the comb, you want the actual concentrator. Um, so, I mean, you can do a comb, but if you're going to do it with a brush up anyway, mm -hmm. just get the concentrator portion. That's the part that's like this. Mm -hmm. I got one right here. But see if you can get a universal one that goes over it if you don't want to buy a whole new blow dryer. Um, but if you do decide to buy a new blow dryer, Golden High is really good. Um, you just have to be very careful to not burn your clients scalp because it's just what it said, real hot. <laughs> And then make sure that you just like you would do a chasing method with a flat iron, that's how you do it with a blow dryer and a brush. That way, that ensures your root gets as straight, straight as possible. Too. That way, you don't have a lot of poofy um, in the roots that's straight at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then, if you're going to do like a silk press or a flat iron, you always want to blow dry in the direction that you're going to flat iron the hair. It'll make it a whole lot easier to make everything low dry. That's true. 15 camera running, bitch. It's going to be like an SPNI running motherfucker. Well, 
Yeah. 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 Stylus John Jill, yeah. get you some. It's on my website, www.stylusjohn.com. 25 bucks, support your boy. Schultz. 
Well, you're going to see something really unusual here. Third and one, a critical play. A different unit on short yardage and a different center. Brian Chafin, the backup center for this short yardage play. And all the linemen up here in a four-point stance, including the center. Highly unusual. And with it, Scarlett is able to break free. It almost broke it all the way before Chris Hawkins was able to get a piece of it. Look at Chafin. They're excited. as it is incomplete. He was trying to connect with Caden Smith. Castello was able to get this complete to Caden Smith, his roommate, and that is a first down for Stanford. The longest catch of the game so far tonight. Here is space wrapped up. Bosu with the tackle. Here's Costello, lining up, looking downfield, and that ball is complete to our single right side. Stanford is knocking on the door. For a young quarterback who's only making a handful of starts, they put a lot on him to check at the line of scrimmage and to, to get them in the right play. Now, are they in their goal line offense again with the new center? I think they are. And it is Chapin in there, so they go to that tight formation. Split shoulder to shoulder. And the quarterback has to make sure he rides the center. That can stay with the snap a little bit longer than in normal situations. Scarlett again. And Scarlett. Can they help him across the line? They're going to mark him just short. They got to call timeout now. They have two remaining. 35 seconds left before the half. Second goal. Penalty play comes in. Scarlett cross the goal line. Offside, defense. And was the play. And that's that. That was the first for. Watch how low they fire off. There's the offsides. They pull the backside guard. That's Brandon Fanaka, who's in there. He's not a normal starter. He's in there in this goal line package. And he is the guy that they run right behind. Jersey Mike's freshly slices it right in front of you. The authentic Jersey way. You can't fake that. And look, you can fake a lot of stuff these days. You can fake my outfit, but you can't fake freshly sliced turkey. You can fake these haunches, but you can't fake freshly sizzled bacon. Nay, you just can't fake a freshly sliced Jersey soap. It's nice to be back in my real body. Number 13, please. Made the authentic Jersey way since 1956. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sum above. Don't run around like a chicken with your, you know, let the party come to you. Dirt Cheap delivers all your party essentials. A lot of these, some of those, even that. Check it out on the app. Order delivery or curbside pickup and get rewarded for every purchase. Have fun. Be careful out there. There's DNA, then there's heavy duty DNA. HDNA. It's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD. With the pulling power to prove it, tow hitches of the world prepare for glory. Get 5.9% APR for 84 months on Sierra heavy duty Denali models. That's over 5,300 in average finance savings. Goldfish and chips. Together as one. Goldfish crisps. Light and airy. Tell them if you're in Hey, I just wanted to let you know Taste I bought the candles. Does. Oh, pray fast, Rico. I, I said, God, you love me. Because he, cause he care about the stuff I care about. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know you do. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. I just wanted to call and tell you that's all. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Okay, I'm going to call you later. 
Drinks, man. Is there something in there? so costly. Again, Jordan Austin, the backup guard. Number 56, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. They were back up to the four this time, but a critical third down play. Can Stanford's defense get off the field or not? Third down and ten. They run a stunt and crossing over the middle and trying to get that first down. Fighting for it is Petit. And it looks like he's going to be half a yard short, but not for lack of effort. And a read came over as he was reaching out. That was very close to the lines that made at that time. As Trainer when changes jerseys on special teams back for the Lerovich punt. Here's a play action. Darnold downfield. He wants Mitchell. 
narrowly intercepted by Quentin Meeks. Ball hung up in the air a little bit. Where has Deontay Burnett been? That's him in motion has not been a factor in the game at all. 35 may be a spot for Burnett here. This idea of putting him in a step formation. It's hard to get press coverage on it when you bring him in motion. Now he motions in top side slot, number two receiver, third and five. Instead, out of the backfield is Jones. First man misses, as he often does. That was Casey Tuhol, Hill, who had no shot at Jones. Cover receiver, but they're running out of it anyways, as that was blown up by Harrison Phillips. Second and ten, downfield again. This time, he finds him. Mitchell at the one. And then Jones goes in. Sam Darnold went back to his same receiver, Steve Mitchell. This time, he got enough on the ball. Here is Scarlett on the return. And this is going to be a good return for a Stanford offense that has used the field position. USC's defense has done a great job on first down. Thank you. 
The route down the field is confirmed. The ball was fumbled by Stanford and recovered, so it'll be second down. And it was recovered by Daniel Marks, okay. the fullback. Straight right, Costello looking, looking, looking. And not finding King Smith. Now there's a late flag. I'm wondering if they're going to say Brandon Fanaka was downfield when the ball was thrown. There was one lineman that was a little bit extended on the sprint out by K.J. Costello. Let's see the call. Personal foul. Lincoln out of bounds. Number 10. Oh, my gosh. Half the distance to the goal line. It's an automatic first down. Right. Okay. Low suit. 
scratch buttermilk biscuits, famous since 1977 and still baked fresh every 15 minutes. It's not the easy way, but it's the only way to make Hardy's breakfast this good. 
So while other places might serve biscuits, they're no match for this made-from-scratch goodness. Find the best deals on the Hardee's app. Dark. I am Eric Coleman here with Coach Nick Alley Yoden. It was a, a, a bittersweet day in the pack today as we had the rivalry games. We had the Civil War with Oregon State versus Oregon and the Apple Cup with Washington State versus University of Washington. Now, Oregon came out victorious in the Civil War, but Washington State came up with a state that win and then in, in Seattle to defeat the Huskies. Now, Coach, I'll go to you first. You watched the Civil War, you watched the Oregon-Oregon State game. What was your impressions of the game? Can you break it down for us uh, and what happened with that, with that blowout? Yeah, well, after two weeks of all the questions of, about Oregon's offensive line and running the ball and all the problems that they've had, protection, it was, I'm telling you, it was almost, if not, near perfect on offense. I believe Oregon scored on every possession. Yes, I believe up until the last three minutes when I switched over to watch the watch the state, there was not one sack or one tackle for loss by Oregon State. I have never seen an offense be as efficient as it was today. And, and uh, I know we're here for Oregon State and watch the state, Primarily today, uh, the Oregon offense uh, was just tremendous. Dylan Gabriel at one time was 11 for 11 or 10 for 10 at the start of the game. And like I said, no negativity. Now, I think when we really look at this, Oregon finally played like we have been expected Oregon to play in all phases. And they just had much better athletes than Oregon State. Because I thought Oregon State was sound on defense. I thought Oregon State still ran the ball and was committed to the run and ran it very efficiently. Uh, they just, as we had mentioned, Eric, did not have the passing when they needed it. In fact, I'm not sure, and it's always tough when we don't have those stats afterwards that we get to look at, because you're going back and forth. I'm not sure Oregon State had a play over 20 yards offense. So the day goes to Oregon in the Civil War. Uh, it was a great day for Oregon. I think Oregon State's still a very good football team, but today was Oregon's day. Oh, that's tough. You know, that, it's a, that's very tough to, you know, trip break going into his first, first Civil War as, as a head coach. Uh, to get a blowout in, in the way that they did. Uh, Dylan Gabriel, uh, 20 for 24, 291 yards in the air, and two touchdowns. He was very efficient, Coach. Uh, what was what were they doing? What was Oregon doing to Oregon State that was making things so simple for Dylan Gabriel? Well, first of all, the pocket was about as clean a pocket as we have seen uh, in college football. But in particular, with the problems and the, the, the stuff we've all kind of targeted with Oregon as problems in protection, it was a clean pocket. Uh, it was a simple game. In fact, Eric, what were the final rushing yards to begin with for Oregon? How many yards did they? Well, uh, Jordan James rushed for 86 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. 
Uh, Dylan Gabriel had 64 uh, rushing yards. Noah Whittington had 64. And Treshawn Holden had 41 on the ground. So Oregon had 240 yards on the ground. Yeah, that, you know, it was a very balanced attack. And Oregon was committed to the run early. But Dylan, you know, they ran some boot passes. They got him out of the pocket, maybe anticipating the protection might not still be there. But uh, Dylan Gabriel was spot on. I don't believe, I mean, really, 21, would you say 20 for 24, or 21 for 24, whatever that was, and I think two of them were dropped. So he was spot on. The fact that they could run it or pass it at will was really tough for Oregon State. I mean, I think Oregon kicked one field goal and all the rest were touchdown. Very wow. efficient drive. Wow, very lopsided performance. Well, up in Seattle, it was more of a, a back and forth matchup between Washington State and, and Washington. Uh, Washington State came out on top of the game. They were winning 24 to 19, and it came down to the last drive, a goal line stop by Washington State. Uh, but the real star of the show today was, was John Matier. He had another great show, Coach. He was uh, 17 for 34, so he, he was efficient when needed through the air. He for 245 yards. Do a touchdown and an interception in the fourth quarter, but where he really made his head coach was on the ground again. He had 62 yards rushing on 16 carries. Some of them were designed, some of them were uh, out of necessity, scrambling, moving around. Uh, but there was the coach Belichick, coach Bel uh, Bill Belichick's son, the defensive coordinator for the University of Washington, had a pretty good game plan for Washington State. They tried to keep. Uh, they tried to keep it here in the pocket. They were they were blitzing from the perimeter, trying to make sure that he stayed in the pocket. And what happened was Matier, uh, when when you know when the Huskies played zone, Matier was able to find the holes in the zone. And when the Huskies went man to man and they blitzed, everyone's back was turning in coverage. He tucked the ball and ran for two touchdowns. So uh, Matier really made them pick their poison on how they wanted to stop him. Uh, there was one point at the end of the first half. He was third down at 20 from the 25. Washington State was going in about 22 seconds left. And Washington State called a quarterback draw. He ran a quarterback draw, and Matita takes it outside. He runs for a touchdown, untouched. So uh, he really did a great job today. Uh, the defense for Washington State did an excellent job. While the University of Washington ran well on the ground, uh, they, they have a potent ground attack. Uh, they, they, were, they were very efficient running the football. Jonah Coleman. Uh, rushed for 75 yards on the ground. Cameron Davis had 24. Uh, and, and Will Rogers through the air was, was very effective, but it was kind of a big but don't break defense for Washington State. And uh, really great to see the Cougars, you know, after all the stuff that's been going on in the Pac-12, all, the, all the, the distractions that's been going on for the Washington State Cougars to go into Seattle. Uh, they, they played the Seahawks Stadium, but they, they were able to go into Seattle get rid of all the distractions and come out with the victory. Uh, it, it was very impressive, Coach. Yeah, you know, and I saw enough, young Eric, I like saying young Eric because you're young. That's a compliment. I saw enough to know this, that John Mateer is the straw that stirs that drink for Washington State. I'm very, I mean, three starts in his career at Washington State, and he's looked very, very good throwing it and running it and his command of the offense. And the other two things that stood out is when you trade field goals for touchdown, which is what Washington State did, they were very good in the high red or even in the red to hold Washington to field goals, which ended up being the difference of the game. And then the goal line stand, first and goal at the nine, I thought Washington State stepped up both their neck and uh, I'll bet Washington wants that play over on fourth down, run an option to the short side of the field. No effect as the that, but you come up to win the game. Oh my God. But <laughs> hats off for Washington State because I pull, I have to admit, it's hard for me to pull for Oregon State when they're playing or I got to be honest. But I pull deeply for Washington State, Oregon State, and I want nothing for them to have great success. So Oregon State losing to Oregon today doesn't hurt my feelings, and I'm still pulling free Oregon State. I want you to know that. But Washington State being Washington, never had love for Washington. Go Cougs. Go Cougs, indeed.
and, and it was, man, I can't, I can't tell you how that felt to, to watch them uh, celebrate after the game. But, you know, with, with the separation uh, of the conference coach and, and moving forward for both of these teams, Oregon State and Washington State, what the, let's, say, let's talk about Washington State first. What does this do for Washington State and their future at, in, in the Pac-12 um, throughout the season? They have a state win against the University of Washington Club. Absolutely. I know where you're going. You know, why are we in doubt when you beat the team that was in the national championship game last year? And you get left out of a league, a so-called league, you know, beat the Pac-12, which we're really happy what's going on there. I don't want to get off on a tangent. That is a huge statement win for Washington State. And I see nothing but blue skies ahead for them, really. I mean, I haven't really studied their schedule ahead. Who on that schedule could beat them if they play like they continue to play? They have a chance to be a 10-win team. Now, it's early. And like I said, I haven't seen who they got ahead. But they have a chance to make a great statement. And today's winning at Washington goes a long way. Well, well Coach, I'll tell you. Uh, I have the schedule right here. Next up is San Jose State. Okay. They, they, go to, they go to Boise State, go to Fresno State. Uh, those are going to be two tough opponents. Then they play against Hawaii, San Diego State, Utah State, New Mexico, Oregon State, and finish with Wyoming. I mean, Coach, I see. I definitely see 10 wins for the Cougs in that, in that schedule if they can stay healthy and play as they play as well as they did tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I never like to put the cart before the horse, just like me. We have fast, and I've been one of them. Uh, I'm not going to act like I'm, I'm not part of it. That fast Oregon's own line. Today, they look like a top 10 team in the country. And Washington State, I'm really su surprised. I think the thing that surprised me is two things. Obviously, Mateer, his maturity and the way he handles the offense. But more importantly, Washington State is playing very stingy defense. So, uh, it looked to be a good team. And again, I want to make sure people know this. I'm full of Oregon State. Oregon State is still a good team. Today, they just look like it was Oregon's day they were outmatched. But they're still a very good football team. And I like their recipe moving forward. Absolutely, Coach. And, uh, you know, that, that's it for, for the, the two rivalry games in the Pac-12. Uh, when we come back, make sure you stick with us. We're going to talk about the rest uh, of, of college football, the top 25, who we think there are some surprise winners. Uh, make sure you stay in touch with us on uh, Pac-12 After Dark. Progress. Moving in a positive direction. We all want our lives to do that. Why is progress also in our name? We've always believed insurance should do more. That's why we get to over a thousand dollars to veterans, funded housing programs for families and youth, and why we're working to make it What's going on? More faith. For us, it is I've been looking for My time is sleeping okay. They don't got deep. They don't got deep. They 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 got like, you know, like, like, you know, 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 Somebody got an order. You got an order. No, that's why I said you would have to, but they. 